Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. And today I'm coming at you again from the T3500 with Arch Labs Linux installed on it. Let me close this out. I was looking at Arch Labs Linux, their homepage here, and their latest news. It's right here, and tells a little bit about some of the latest news and the updates here. It says the biggest change for us is the inclusion of a live session of DK which stands for DK Window Manager. Tells you how to get to it and all that. So you go to the release notes, it tells you a little more about what they've done. They added the basic live, uh, live session for DK, updating uh, session skeletal configs. They removed the K super key and the whole XFCE suite in favor of LX Appearance. LX Appearance, if you don't know, is a program to change GTK Plus themes, icon themes, and fonts used by applications. It is a feature-rich GTK Plus theme switcher. Let me minimize that. But it did that, and it removed a whole XFCE suite. So I didn't know how that was going to affect anything. And as you'll see, it you don't boot into the XF, or install XFCE by default no more. And you're, you'll be booted into the DK Session Manager or Window Manager. Let's go ahead and get that going here, and then we'll come back to the notes. But what I did was I just basically used Simple Screen Recorder to record the installation process, and here it is in Parole Media Player. So let's start that. I can skip forward a little bit here. I had it set up there. Let me back up. <laughs> pause. I got it set up with six gigabytes of RAM, two cores of my processor. I did enable the EFI, 256 megabytes of video memory, and I'm using the VMSBGA, which was a mistake. It should be using the other one, and I'll change that later on. Okay, I'm going to hit play here. All right, Arch Labs install medium. Arch Labs install medium with speech. A little more arrow key, get a little faster here. While it's booting up. Arrow key, okay, so right here you see a big difference. Right now it's booting in the XOR. And there is the DK window manager. According to the page, it said Alt, Shift, and Enter will bring up a terminal, and it does. So let's go ahead and get this started. Installer, press enter. And I'm gonna breeze through this pretty quickly. In fact, the partitioning scheme, I can just get, I can just go right through it here and we'll see what I did do. Uh, I give it four gigabytes of RAM. Oops. Let me pause that. And you can see I gave it Four partitions, first one being the boot EFI, the second one being the root partition, third one being uh, swap space, SDA4 was, was going to be home. So here we're going to click back. There we go. Now we're going to click back again. Now we're going to mount those partitions. SDA2 will be mounted as root. We're going to use the EXT4 file system. We're going to mount it with the default mount options. Alright, it picked up the VFAT or the SDA1, which was the EFI system partition. And this is for the swap space. And this will be for the home. And we'll have to type in home here. The forward slash is already there. You just have to type in home. We're going to mount it with the default options. Here we got to select our mirrors. Where do we want our mirrors to come from? So you naturally you're going to pick your country, in my case the United States, user and password. Typically I, I add my password in the root position here, but it says if left un empty, it'll use the users by default, and that does work. <laughs> We're going to use Bash Shell. We'll name this Arts Labs VM. Two, just so I can tell it from the other ones. All right, 
Now this is for your uh, locale, determine system languages, custom formats, or currency formats. For me, it's English, US, UTF, America. I'm going to find my time zone in alphabetical order. I'm looking for Chicago. And we're going to use the Linux kernel. And I'm going to go to my old standard to grub. <laughs> select sessions. I'm going to go ahead and select DK, but it would be there by default anyway. And I'm going to use the light DM as a display manager. Okay, here's where the fun really begins. If you're installing on real hardware, go through this, take your time, and go ahead and get most of this stuff. In my case, here in a VM, I'm just going to get a few things, base to bell being one of them, Firefox, GNOME system monitor, we'll fast forward, arrow forward. <laughs> So you got a lot of stuff here you can go ahead and get, which is awesome. The drawback is you need to know what you want. <laughs> All right, we'll press OK. We're not going to run a command, but let's look at the configuration. I'll pause the video here. You can see I got the four partitions, the VFAT being the boot partition. And this is not stretched out, but if, you, if it was, you'd see all the packages I selected. Let's go. All right. Press enter, and it's on the way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. There'll be no more prompts. It'll just continue until it's finished. I'm going to minimize this. Let's go back to their web page here. And this is Arts Labs Linux. This is their release notes. One of the things I question here about remove the NVIDIA installer for the NVIDIA driver setup during install. Personally, I've never seen that included. If it was before, I didn't see it. But then again, it could have been an automated pickup or something. It could have just detected it, and then you would have had that option. But if you did, it don't any longer. <laughs> That's pretty slick. The DK manager or DK window manager and I don't know anything about it but I watched a really great video and I'll put that link in here if you want interested in DK window manager I would suggest watching the, the Linux cast video on it it goes through it and tells you how to set it up and some of the pros and cons and he seemed to have really liked it let's see here I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and get through this and hopefully, oops. uh oh, I started it all over somehow. Here we go. I want to get to the reboot. All right, so now we get to finish, exit the installer and reboot, or you could go ahead and boot right into light DM again. So I'm going to remove that ISO. That's why I opened that back up. And let's get rid of the ISO. Minimize that and get it out of the way. I'm going to fast forward through the login stuff. Okay, at this point, let me pause this. At this point, up until, up until this point, you would... When you log in with this light DM, it would boot you into XFCE 4 desktop, but not any longer, as you'll see right here. Our only option is the DK window manager. So, I'm going to go ahead and log in. And there it is. Now, what do we do? <laughs> well, we installed our desktop of choice. And I, what I did, bring up my notes while that's working. What I did was I copied and pasted the notes and stuff over, and I found right here on manual installation, I found and was able to glean quite a few program software that you was going to need in order to run XFCE, and I'll make sure this gets in the description. It's funny, though, it directs you right away to the Arts Linux installation guide. <laughs> 
which is awesome. So anyway, I'll make sure this gets in the show notes or description. But here, here is all those packages that some of them. That's why I put needed here. Some of them will already be in installed and won't need to be reinstalled, and it'll just skip them. We minimize this for now. See where we're at here. Okay, I'm gonna SSH into that in the Arts Labs VM so I can just copy and paste and won't have to type all that. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to typing. <laughs> all right, so Alt Shift Enter should bring me up a terminal. There we go. And I guess the first thing we need to do is make sure we're online by running an update or run an update to ensure we're online. And we are. Yeah, we need an IP address, so type in IP space A. Now to give you your address. Now let's turn on the SSH daemon. All right. It's a good idea, in my opinion, to check, make sure that it's going to show as, it, as it's active and running. You'll see here it is, an indicated green there. It says active and running. So we're ready to copy and paste. Let me SSH into the Arts Labs VM first. Skip forward. <laughs> it's got to know what to do. <laughs> Skip forward. Gonna make you type in yes. Give it the password. And apparently I was in. So now we're in this other. We've SSH'd into the Arts Labs installation in the VM, and I'm just going to be able to copy and paste this command and get everything we need for XFCE4 desktop. Alright, so as you see here, it's, it's going to skip a bunch of stuff that was already installed. However, most of it has to do with XORG or XF86 for their video stuff. Graphics drivers. But that's good to know. Alright. Default, I'm going to get all. All. Resolving the dependencies. All right, it's got 28 meg download. <laughs> we'll go ahead and fast forward. Yeah, Scrot, it said we need a simple command line screenshot utility. Why that was listed there, I'm not sure. All right, looks like that's, that's done. All right. Now, we may have to enable the network manager. I don't think so. But one of the times I was I was uh, installing it, I had to actually in, enable the network manager. So let's let's just see if it's active. Yep, it's active and running. So we're through there. So let me exit out of that and close that connection. Get rid of that terminal. Minimize these notes and bring the virtual box back up and we should be able to reboot we probably could just log out and then log back in but i'm gonna go ahead and reboot just to make sure all of it's in place all right i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward skip forward skip forward <laughs> okay so here's our lightning m which we did not have to enable. And up here now, at this time, we have the XFCE. So I'm going to select that and then log in the XFCE. Like I said, remember, up until this point with Arch Labs, when you installed it and it rebooted, it, it rebooted into an XFCE4 desktop. Now we had to actually install it, which is actually great because it gives more control to you or me as users to what we want or don't want. And we have audio out of the box. You won't be able to hear it, but I did. We unmute that first. <laughs> All right, turn the sounds up while I'm here. 
But you'll notice there's two volume icons in the taskbar there, are actually the systems tray. And that's kind of a little bonus here. I'll show you how to get rid of that. Now that does not happen all the time, and I don't know why it happens when it does. And now's when I realize that my graphics controller is set to the wrong controller. <laughs> so we'll select 1440 by 900 to deal with that for a second here. That's all right. I can change it next time. All right, so we just did downloaded and installed some Arch, Linux, or Arch Labs wallpapers. So let's look at those. Get something different besides the XFCE desktop there, the wallpaper. There we go. That's much better. All right, so let's check, make sure we got Bath installed. And I believe that's the first time I've had to use a password to run a Bath command. Maybe. Let's make sure we don't have any updates because we just installed a bunch of software. And there's nothing to do. This is XFCE 416 sitting on Arts Labs. HTOP says we're using 543 megabytes of RAM. Pretty good. <laughs> NeoFetch is not installed. Let's install that real quick. Let's fast forward, skip forward, skip forward. Go. Neo fetch. There we go. 570 megs of RAM. That's pretty good. So basically, Arch Labs gives you the vehicle to install Arch Linux and then the desktop of your choice. That's that's actually I like this. This is actually a better option, I think. All right, so now let's get to that volume icon. And like I said, this does not happen all the time, but it does happen. It has happened. Let's see. I'm gonna open up a terminal, and then we're gonna sudo our sudo thunar, and then we'll control H to show hidden files. We'll go to the dot x profile open it with mouse pad because i don't have anything else installed at this point make that a little bigger and we're looking for the one that says start the volume icon volume tray application and there it is there so put a hash mark right there save it control s close it out control h to Hide the files again. Now let's just log out and log back in, and that volume icon will be gone. <laughs> that thing bothered me for a little while. It was all happening on my system, so I had a vested interest in finding out. And there we go. <laughs> see where we're at here. Right, we're pretty close to being finished. I guess really I can just close this out at the time. power off yep let's power off i can just put the video off and that's how i did it <laughs> so that's the arch labs make sure these notes get in here now you some of these programs you'll still need regardless of the desktop that you're in, installing uh, i don't know that all for sure like if you install gnome over it or something it might have all this stuff i don't know i do know they got rid of gdm right where would I see that? Yep, reduce the number of sessions to the open box, and then they remove refine the bootloader and SDDM and GDM. So I don't know if you install GNOME, well, how that would handle GDM. You might have to enable it, or I'm not sure. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to close these out. Arch Labs, give it a try. I like it because they gave us more control as the end user about what we wanted. They didn't install XFCE4 to me. They gave me some suggested software, and I actually added to that software. It's all good. <laughs> Arts Labs. Thanks, guys, for watching. Peace out. Y'all have a great one. Bye.